We begin with breaking news. The Justice Department has appointed former FBI Director Robert Mueller to oversee the investigation into any possible connections between the Trump campaign and Russia in last year's election. For President Trump today, there was no escape from the fallout over allegedly pressuring the uh, uh, previous FBI director, James Comey, and about sharing secrets with the Russians. Talk of obstruction of justice and endangering national security hung heavy in the air, even as the president spent the day on the road. Lisa Desjardins begins our coverage. Things are not always fair. The firestorm in Washington clearly on the president's mind at the Coast Guard Academy's graduation in New London, Connecticut. Look at the way I've been treated lately, especially by the media. No politician in history, and I say this with great surety, has been treated worse or more unfairly. He gave this advice to graduates. You will find that things happen to you that you do not deserve and that are not always warranted, but you have to put your head down and fight, fight, fight. The president did not directly Never, address ever, the last day's headlines. Up. Those started with this report from the New York Times, citing unnamed sources saying in February, Mr. Trump spoke to former director of the FBI, James Comey, about an investigation of his advisor, Michael Flynn, and told Comey, I hope you can let this go. That reportedly happened a day after Flynn was fired as national security advisor for lying about his contacts with the Russians. Comey himself was fired last week. The White House has denied the story, insisting the president never asked anyone to end any investigation. But it all meant a new round of shockwaves across Capitol Hill. Democrats renewed calls for an independent commission or special prosecutor on the Russia connection and Trump's firing of Comey. The events of the last two weeks have shaken my confidence in this administration's competence and credibility. Look, enough is enough. President Trump's unchecked and reckless behavior is impacting the national security of the United States of America. Among Republicans, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska also joined the call for a special counsel at the Department of Justice. You know, I'm praying for the president. Others, I mean, like Georgia is, Congressman uh, Rick Allen, I mean, indicated the, concern uh, for the White House. How do you uh, endure all this? <laughs> So, uh, and still try to govern. House Speaker Paul Ryan is withholding any conclusion for now, saying Congress has to get to the bottom of all this. We need the facts. It is obvious there, there are some people out there who want to harm the president, but we have an obligation to carry out our oversight regardless of which party is in the White House. Alongside those words, a sudden flurry of activity. House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz asked the FBI to send all memoranda, notes, summaries and recordings about contact between James Comey and the president. And the committee says it hopes to have Comey testify next week. The Senate Intelligence Committee is also asking for Comey to testify. And the Senate Judiciary Committee is now getting involved, sending letters to the FBI and the White House asking for all memos and recordings as well. Republican Congressman Justin Amash of Michigan went so far to say if the Comey memo is true, it would be grounds for impeachment. But California Democrat Adam Schiff, ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee and a leading Trump critic, said it's too soon to go there. No one ought to, in my view, uh, rush to embrace, you know, the most extraordinary remedy that involves the removal of the president from office. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin made his own offer to Congress over reports that President Trump discussed highly classified information with Russian diplomats last week. Putin spoke at a news conference in Sochi, Russia. If the U.S. considers it necessary, we are ready to provide the Senate and U.S. Congress with a record of the conversation between Lavrov and Trump. Putin also decried what he called anti-Russian sentiment. Special correspondent Nick Schifrin covers Russia. He spoke to us from the Dagestan region. President Putin expressed a genuine frustration that, in his view, the Washington establishment won't let President Trump improve the bilateral relationship. And he said he was concerned by Washington's unpredictability. But at the same time, he cracked a joke at U.S. expense, and the video shows senior Russian officials laughing. There's a certain schadenfreude here in seeing Washington suffer such turbulence. As the senior Russian foreign ministry spokeswoman put it yesterday, how do we live in this unstable world of information? 
with pleasure. Meanwhile, with the president back in Washington tonight, the next act in this political drama is set for tomorrow. That's when Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein will brief the full Senate over the firing of James Comey and handling of the Russia investigation. So repeating the breaking news we reported at the top of the show moments ago, the Justice Department announced that Robert Mueller, who is the former head of the FBI, is the special counsel to investigate connections between the Trump campaign and Russia during the 2016 campaign. Now uh, we go back to Lisa Desjardins on Capitol Hill. Lisa, have you gotten any reaction to this from uh, from lawmakers yet? That's right. We put out some calls and we have a little bit of reaction from the House Democrat leader's office, Nancy Pelosi's office. They say they are furiously writing a statement, but they have told me that this does not change their call for an independent commission, which is what they were working on today. Uh, I, they have been asking for an independent counsel of this sort, but they say they still want more than that. From Republicans, our Capitol Hill producer, Julie Percha, just talked to Representative Peter King of New York. He is on the House Intelligence Committee. He told her that he thinks there was no allegation of a crime here, and he's not sure a special counsel is needed. So no surprise, John, in this divided Congress, we have divided reaction right now to this announcement. But is this going to turn the temperature down, do you think, on some of the rhetoric that we've, we're hearing, especially from the Democrats? I think one factor here in the choice of Robert Mueller is that he is very well known here and very well respected in Congress. That could help Republicans sort of say that we think there will be an up and up investigation that could get to the facts of the Russia probe. Now, at the same time, we have to remember that could be separate from what Congress does in this matter of potential obstruction of justice at the White House. That's where we're seeing a lot of attention, especially in the Senate today, John, a lot of big decisions over how the Senate goes forward and who handles those questions of what the president did or did not tell Mr. Comey about whether he should investigate Michael Flynn. And, of course, that is going on. The Intelligence Committee calling for documents, the Judiciary Committee calling for documents. Where do you think that's going to going to head from here. There's a key person to watch, John. That is Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa. No coincidence that he was out of the spotlight today. He's got a big decision to make. How hard does he press on this matter? Traditionally, the Judiciary Committee is where you would see an obstruction of justice investigation or looking into this. But is that where Republicans want to go when it is their own president who is in the questioning, uh, who is being questioned here? That's probably a decision for uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell as well as Chuck Grassley. And Mr. Grassley may sort of seemed to go out of his way today, John, to avoid reporters. Dianne Feinstein, who's the ranking Democrat on that committee, says she absolutely wants judiciary to be a lead committee on these questions. They are certainly stepping up their involvement, as you said, asking for more documents today, along with two other committees. We're posting online all of these developments. It's hard to keep track, but right now three committees asking for documents involving Mr. Comey, and that's in addition to the two investigations in Congress and the Intelligence Committees on Russia. Lisa Desjardins on Capitol Hill, keeping up with these events are, that are fast-breaking. Thank you very much, Lisa.